Welcome back to a Friday edition of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. For the next four weeks, all through the month of November, we are going to be talking about party politics. I know we talked about municipal politics in October, September, and August, but we're back talking party politics before November 22nd when parties go back to Parliament and they start talking about the issues that are facing the people of Canada. We're going to be talking about each individual party each week. And to kick it all off, We're going to be talking the NDP. We're going to be talking about what went wrong, what went right during the federal election, what they need to do now, and what they need to do moving forward after November 22nd. And to do that with me, I have brought in a guest from the past, a fan of the show, I'm assuming, because he's returning and he he reached, he said he would do it. Uh, Juan Estevez, who ran in Calgary Center in the last federal election, in the September 20th federal election, the 44th general election. So Juan, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. So uh, as you are not in Ottawa right now, you (laughs) did not win. Uh, How how are you feeling? Almost two months after the election, how are you feeling right now from the campaign that you ran? So I I feel pretty good. Like, obviously, I didn't win, but I did exceed, like, my own, like, expectations and goals that I had set for myself. Uh, You know, I ended up with 16% of the 16% of the popular vote, uh, uh, around, like, 9,600 votes, which is the best performance of an NDP candidate in Calgary Center since 1988. Uh, So that's a a really big achievement. Uh, I was aiming, I was really, like, my goal was to get above 10%. Uh, ideally 15%. And so I surpassed that. So, well, and let's talk about that because uh, this election, the conservative vote collapsed, but the NDP vote did increase across the province of Alberta. Yeah. When you were knocking on the doors, did you get good reception? Or when you were talking to your neighbors via social media because of COVID restrictions, what were people telling you about the NDP? And before we start talking about what went wrong, let's talk about what you were hearing first. So there are definitely a lot more progressive people in Alberta than the stereotype like yeah. uh, leads you to believe. Uh, there are lots of people that want true universal health care. I spoke to a lot of people who don't have dental care and they want dental care. Um, and so like people were very receptive to the ideas of the NDP um, and they want more progressive were they policies. Re- were they receptive to the policies and not the leader or were they receptive to both because this the last of this election the ndp ran a heavily digital campaign because of covid19 uh the leader didn't make a stop here in calgary so was that a benefit or a downside to you to actually have more of a digital presence from the leader and people actually seeing that on social media or were you hearing where's your leader uh so it depended on like from my experience it kind of depended on the age group uh so so younger people they they seem to like drug meat uh they were fine with the digital like the like the predominantly digital campaign that he ran they like his tiktoks um but the you know like the like the older demographic definitely they i got asked you like where is he why is why didn't he stop in calgary um like he did stop in edmonton twice uh to help Blake up in his campaign uh, and he won so it was obviously not for nothing yeah um I wish he would have stopped here in Calgary uh even if it was for only half a day um but yeah it definitely it definitely depended on the de- demographic younger people seem to like drug meat older folks seem to were or maybe they're they're okay with him but were disappointed he didn't come to Calgary we, we saw a, a heavy presence on TikTok, and you mentioned that, because it seemed like he he, he won the airwaves on TikTok for social media. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm not on TikTok. I've never used TikTok. I do not understand TikTok. I, 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 I am in that category of, like, right on the cusp of being a millennial, but here I am. I don't understand social media, so that's why I, I, I rise against it all the time. Mm-hmm. Is that where campaigns are going? Because it seems like the NDP usually are in the forefront of something that is changing uh, with the new method of campaigning. 
And in this election, it was social media that played a heavy role for them. And TikTok was the new thing that connected the youth voters. So is that where we're heading? Is that where you're seeing that in the next election, if you do decide to run, you would be focusing more on digital campaigning instead of that traditional door-to-door -door campaigning? So, so when it comes to, to campaigning, I th you need like multi-prong approaches. And I do think like you can't ever get rid of door knocking. I don't think yeah. um, just because it's just such a, a direct way of reaching out to people and speaking to them. And a lot of people won't, like a lot of people don't, won't even consider voting for you if you like never even knocked on their doors. Um, right here, <laughs> right here. If you do not come to me, I'm not voting for you. I'm putting that out there right now, candidates. And that's why I made my decision in my election. <laughs> Yeah, so so you need so you need multi like you need to approach it from all all fronts. Um, but I do think that you 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 will probably need some sort of TikTok presence in the future, uh, in future campaigns. Uh, my campaign, I actually got like decent interactions uh, on TikTok uh, with my my stuff and my campaign on there. Um, Jack Meat had good interactions. I know Matthew Green. He had some pretty good interactions. Um, he was the candidate for Hamilton. I can't remember Hamilton something. I want to say um, ha Hamilton Center, but I could be wrong. He, yeah. he, he won his riding as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do think there will be more candidates in the future. Um, and that's just, it just kind of, it is, it, that's how it goes. Uh, as time goes on, becomes things become more digital. You know, when Justin ran in 2015, um, everyone made fun of him for being, for taking selfies and being and interacting with young people and trying to relate with them. Um, and, but it worked out for him. Uh, and so I think TikTok is just the new, it's just another way of doing it. So the, the one thing I heard over and over again, since the election was, um, social media is great. Social media is great to engage younger voters, the first time voters, but traditionally, and uh, you're younger than me, so you might be able to speak to this a little bit more than I can, but traditionally younger voters do not get out and vote. I don't know why. I think they should. I don't. I think there needs to be more engagement and more education of why you should vote. But traditionally, younger voters do not vote. I don't know what the reason behind it is. So when you were talking to people younger than yourself when you were or running in the last election did you say you need to vote or was there an apathy of saying sure we like what you're saying on tiktok but actually getting up and going to the ballot box is just not in the cards because i have other things to do that day so it there is an element of apathy um even when i spoke to i spoke to young people at the doors as well uh they they just don't think that their vote matters like it won't it won't be enough uh and so it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy uh you know if everyone who, who who believed that went out and voted they could swing an election in almost any direction that they wanted uh but until they until they like actually go out and experience it they won't they won't realize that um and so i don't know i think part of it is the way our electoral system is set up uh you know first past the post makes is not the most democratic way uh and it doesn't rep it's not a very good way of representing the population uh so i do think if there was electoral reform and it show like we reformed our electoral system to to give voices to not just the the majority groups of each riding but the the second and even third place give it more diverse representation people would be more willing to go out and vote because they can see it would make more of a difference. So we're going to jump around here. And this is the great thing about conversations. We do that. We jump around. So let's talk about uh, electoral reform because 2015, we remember that great quote from Justin Trudeau of this yeah. will be the last election that is by first past the post. And well, we've had two elections since, and we're still voting people on first past the post. Uh, we are in a minority government right now. Jagmeet Singh, uh, Yves-Francois Blanchet, leads, holds the sort of the power in the House of Commons because the Liberals need 11 other MPs to pass any legislation. If the NDP were to say to Justin Trudeau, let's make it happen. Let's make electoral reform actually happen. Do you think the Liberals would go ahead with that? Because they've won the last three elections under the first past the postal system, but we do need that reform. 
Do you think the NDP should be putting up that uh, card and saying, okay, we'll help you, but we want this done first? Yeah, I do think that they should make their support of the Liberal government conditional on electoral reform. Because the unfortunate truth, I don't think that the NDP, like the NDP is going to have a very tough time ma- making inroads, uh, getting more seats without electoral reform. And so it really, they shouldn't support the Liberals government unless they're actually willing to do this. And now that, now that the Conservatives have lost two elections in a row, despite winning the popular vote, uh, you can see more of them are willing to embrace electoral reform. Um, so I, th- I think that they should make it conditional. Obviously, um, it depends on whether Justin wants to do it. He said near the end of the campaign that he would be still open to it. Um, but he does have, if the NDP does make it conditional, he does still have a way of making things pass with the bloc because the bloc is the only party who really should be opposed to it because they're the, they're the most overrepresented party and would not benefit from electoral reform. Um, what type of electoral reform are we talking here? Because uh, I think you and I would disagree on which form that we would prefer, and we can yeah. get into that if we want to. But let's let's talk about the NDP because they have been uh, uh, quite heavily in favor of proportional representation, right? Yes. And yeah. Why so is the, that? So the NDP wants mixed member proportional representation, the same system that Germany and New Zealand have, mm-hmm. um, and so it's not just proportional based off writings you also need to pull uh not pull like get a certain percentage of the of the popular vote across the country um and it would just it would reflect you know this uh citizens assemblies on electoral reforms and surveys and all that they always pick out proportional representation over ranked ballot uh and we believe that's this obviously that i'm not gonna lie it would benefit the ndp the most which is what proportional uh, mixed member proportional mixed member, yeah. yeah yeah it would benefit the NDP the most and the greens as well um but we and do the believe it's people's party of Canada as well yeah so I mean that's <laughs> it's the double-edged sword right with any it, it system is a, it's a double it, it is a double-edged sword but it would benefit the NDP more than any other party so the the people's might party might win a few seats which obviously most people don't like because they're a little bit too extreme on the right um, but that, that's kind of how living in a democracy works. Um, you have to take the good with the bad sometimes. Yeah. And, and I really hope that, um, that, uh, with, with introducing electoral reform and mixed member proportional representation, we actually start embracing true coalition governments because we have to accept the, the reality that it's very rare to win a pure majority, um, in that system, which a lot of people prefer minority government, most people in Canada prefer, prefer minority governments anyways, um, but that would kind of eliminate the idea of majority governments and would really force the parties to form true coalitions, which I think would be really beneficial. Um, so we could have like an NDP, a, a real NDP liberal coalition where they actually get together and negotiate and then you have members of both parties within the cabinet. Yeah. Um, and then it's stable as well, because we like minority governments because it helps like moderate and bring out the better ideas from all the part from each parties. Um, but they're not stable. They can get voted down at any minute. Uh, and having an election every 18 months is kind of tiring and a waste of money and resources. Uh, so really hope that with introducing uh, mixed uh, member proportional representation. It makes our system more democratic, and it gives us stable coalition governments. Do you think the do you think in the 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 the, the honest follow up to that question is look at two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven, the NDP won the most seats it had ever won in its history, almost one hundred and five seats. I think one hundred and three, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember, yeah. and I've got like foggy brain right now, as you can imagine. So I gotta ask the question: Is it just because the NDP are traditionally stuck to that third party rank? Because in 2011, I didn't hear the NDP talking about electoral reform because they had won so many seats and they were official opposition. Now they're back to third or fourth place. They're talking about it. So is it that 
you are sort of in a rut right now because you talked about it. You didn't pick up as, as much seats as you wanted to in the last election. So you want to have that. But if you did pick them up, would you we still be having this conversation? Uh, that's a... Uh, personally... There you go, personally. Even, <laughs> on a personal level, I even if the NDP won a super majority, I still think that... Really? Pro- yeah, absolutely. Oh. Like, proportional representation should be should be the way forward because the all the reason the ndp performed so well in 2011 was it was two reasons it was michael michael ignatiev being a very unlikable liberal leader and jack layton being a very likable ndp leader so it wasn't the ndp did well at the detriment to the liberals which is traditionally how they always do, right? If yeah. the Liberals do well, they win. If the Liberals do bad, the NDP win more seats. So it is it is how it is. Um, I want to talk about where you guys did well. You guys did well up in uh, uh, Edmonton. You picked up another seat, uh, mm. second first time in a long time that uh, the NDP had rep- been represented by two MPs in the province of Alberta. You saw your numbers increase as well. The best performance of the NDP in Calgary Center since 2000 or 1988, I think you said it was. Yeah. What does what do you give credit that to? Is it policies? Is it the conservatives not doing as strong a campaign as they traditionally do, and it, the conservatives stayed home, or was it Jugmeet Singh? At the end of the day, when you looked at the numbers afterwards, did you say, okay, we won these votes, or? the other parties lost these votes honest question so it's it's a little it's a little of everything okay. so in 2015 under thomas Mulcair, the ndp shifted more to the right that was the, the most right leaning campaign that they've ever run yeah. under jug meat they have shifted back more to the left and people like progressive policies they want so progressive voters are very picky. We're not afraid to gate. We're not afraid to like gatekeep and purity test and everything. And we're not going to be loyal to you if you aren't a real progressive. So by moving more back to the left, they like picked up more of those progressive voters because we we want progressive policies. Uh, here in Alberta, I there's also the Jason Kenney factor. <laughs> everything involving Jason Kenney and the UCP is very toxic. Um, you, you don't want to, you want to be too closely associated with it. Um, and that really hurt, um, Aaron conservative, O'Toole? uh, that hurt Aaron O'Toole in Alberta, uh, specifically in Edmonton, um, Greece, Greece, Bar. Greece, Bar. it really, it hurt their campaign there, which a lot, which helped, you know, Blake's a great candidate. Um, but it, it does help that Jason Kenny's toxicity yeah. helped decrease the, the conservative vote up there. Um, so I think it's a, a mixture of the NDP moving a little bit more back to the left, campaigning on more progressive policies, and then the toxicity of Jason Kenney here in Alberta. You mentioned just briefly there that Thomas Mulcair did move the party more to the center because he thought that's where the uh, most votes would be for them to pick up. Yeah. As we saw in that election, it did not happen, and we ended up with the liberal majority. Yeah, Jugmeet Singh has moved the party back to its uh, Jack Layton, Ed Broadbent days of being more of the center left, and I would even say traditionally left party. We are always releasing new episodes and from time to time, new specials of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button wherever you are getting your favorite podcast so you never miss an episode. But also, be sure to head over to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and give us a follow. We have behind-the-scenes looks at upcoming guests, upcoming episodes, and some special social media-only content. Subscribe to the show now. And now, let's get back to our episode. Is that where Canadians are at, do you think? Or do you think we need to have that progressive? And what does progressive mean in the sense of an NDP party? Because you don't traditionally think progressive means NDP. You traditionally think left means NDP. So what does progressive mean in the tent of the NDP? Yeah, so so progressive is a very, it's a very muddy, it's become a very muddy term. 
Uh, <laughs> I got attacked during the municipal campaign for saying something like that, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, the, I think most people would agree, you know, like from start from right to left, it's the conservatives, liberals, and then the NDP, yep. at least from the three major parties. Um, but the liberals like to th brand themselves as progressives um, as a way to try to gain votes from people who might vote NDP. Like, um, and so it, it really muddies the term. I did criticize my liberal opponent uh, for calling herself a progressive, even though she was a, uh, a self-described moderate. Um, well, she was technically a progressive conservative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, I, and that's, that is the most... I will. I I, do, I try not to throw shade on the show, but let's be honest. She was a progressive conservative. Anyone who looks in her past can find that out. Yes. So please do not send me a hate mail. If you do, it's going in the trash, like yeah. every other hate mail I get. <laughs> yeah, and so like, there's there's nothing wrong with switching ideologies. I've changed my ideology as I've grown over time. So that that's just that's just how life is. So there there there's nothing wrong with her being a progressive conservative and then the liberal. Yeah. In my view, they're very close ideologically, so it actually makes a lot of sense that they that she uh, that she switched to that. But so progressive liberals that see themselves as progressives because they they support some progressive ideas, like they support uh, the ten dollar a day childcare, which is something the NDP obviously supports. We would prefer a true universal free one, ideally, but we'll take we're not going to say no to to, to the ten dollar a day childcare in twenty twenty six. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> gotta keep uh, on make, mentioning that because everyone thinks it's gonna happen tomorrow. Not happening yeah, in 2026, guys. Averaged out over five years, yeah, or whatever it is. Um, you know, they they've campaigned on pharmacare several times, and I don't know if that's ever happened. Um, and so the, like they believe so, so they'll they'll take some ideas, but they won't, it's like watered down. And so we like to say. So we, look, we both like to call ourselves progressives. They call themselves progressives because they see, because they, they have some of our, our ideas. Um, and we call ourselves progressives. We use progressive and leftist and socialist, some of us, yeah. uh, interchangeably. Um, and so it's just, a, it's a muddy term. We are uh, a month and a half from the camp, from the election day in the federal election on September 20th. Um, I, I, I follow the news. I try to ensure that I keep informed on what's happening and where the party leaders are. You might have been tuned in a little bit more because you were the candidate and you know where the, the leaders, your leader is. But what's Jagmeet Singh doing right now? I know this is coming out in a week's time from when we do uh, record it, but it seems he met with his caucus you would think that he would be trying to get out and continue talking to Canadians, but it seems like he's in a bubble right now. Am I, am I misreading that? Or are you as the former candidate seeing that as well? I, I'm seeing that as well. Uh, so I, I think a lot of, I think the, even though we did increase the, the, the percentage of the popular vote, uh, the NDP was expecting 40 seats, yeah, maybe 50. Um, and so there are questions about his, uh, whether he will continue to be a leader. So I think um, there are, I think he's like taking a step back and he's trying to focus on, on working with the caucus to, uh, to figure uh, out and, what's like, next. And, and, yeah, to figure out what's next. Um, I won't speculate to, as to whether or not he will continue to be leader. He was, he did pull the highest of, of all the leaders during the election. Um, and I do think that he's still likable enough as a, as a leader to, to keep going. Um, but it, I think that's kind of why he's taking a step back and trying to focus primarily uh, internally with his caucus. Plus, he has a um, pregnant wife. We have to remember that. He's probably yeah. doing father duty to make sure his wife is uh, comfortable before she gives birth to their first child, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. And the... And, you know, the, the, he has tried, he has made a few statements online. Uh, you know, he criticized Elections Canada's uh, uh, lack of accessibility to voting. Uh, and Justin Trudeau hasn't reached out to, to try to negotiate anything to see if he wants NDP support either. Um, so he's still there. He's just, 
I think it's also the perception of, you know, he was super out there during the election, super visible, and now it's on election. And so. And he could be on TikTok. Everyone, everyone I don't follow him on TikTok. I do not have TikTok. So he could be doing things on TikTok. Uh, he, I just no, don't he, know. Is, he hasn't been as active now. Okay. I want to talk about sort of uh, the next steps. We are returning to parliament. You picked up one seat in the last election. You went from 24 seats to 25 seats. Uh, you did lose some seats in some areas of this country. In Newf- Newfoundland, you lost Jack Harris's old riding. Uh, you did pick up one in Edmonton. So you did do some seat changes, but at the same time, you ended up with one more seat. Does and In the last, the last parliament, I will say the NDP were effective of holding the government to account. Now that the Liberals have sort of an arrogance about them, and I will talk to a Liberal supporter here in a few weeks as well, does the NDP have the same clout they did in the last parliament or are they disgruntled or sort of deflated because of the bad, the quote unquote, bad showing that they had in the election with only one additional seat? I think there is a, the attitudes going in is a bit different because um, going in last in, in 2019 to that parliament, there was this idea of the the NDP can push the liberals to the left they can push for the more progressive policies and they did that um during the during the pandemic which was good but i think now you know the liberals calling the election early to to try to grab a majority and the ndp not winning as many seats as we were hoping uh there's a kind of a bit more of a disgruntled attitude going in and, and that can be seen as um and jagmeet saying he's willing to vote down the liberals budget if if uh the liberals don't give throw them a bone yeah, which <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but the NDP spent, I think, $25 million last, in this last election for, on their campaign across the, pro, across the, uh, the country. And like all other political parties, you guys are all tapped out. People are struggling. Yeah. Their donations aren't coming in as they traditionally do. So while it's great that you can say, I'm going to vote down something, you don't want to go back to the polls as much as Canadians don't want to go back to the polls because uh, I'm assuming Canadians didn't want to go back to the polls in September. So when, when the leader says that as the former candidate, are you saying if we go back to the polls, I, there's no way that Canadians are going to give the person who calls the election liberals, NDP conservatives, any chance of winning because they don't want an election. They want people to work together because we have literally the exact same makeup of parliament as we did yeah eight months ago yeah i I mean you know politics is a is a game (laughs) uh i think who blinks first (laughs) yeah the you know yeah we're like all parties are are kind of tapped out uh they're tired they're they're low on funds and i think all three major parties also have leadership ish like a leadership issue going on you know jagmeet i wouldn't be shocked if he stays as leader for one more election yeah um I think the writing is on the wall for Justin. He's not going to run another election as the liberal leader. Uh, uh, Freeland is very set up to, to succeed him. Um, there's still the wild card of Mark Carney. Um, and Aaron O'Toole, it seems like Ar- his, his nail was in the coffin when he introduced a, a carbon tax, according to the conservatives. Yeah. So, so I think, I think, you know, they're, they're trying to play hardball to get, uh, to get something that they want. Uh, of the, I think the block is the, the only party who really has a stable leader, uh, cause they performed exactly how they wanted to. Um, so I think the hope is the liberals will, are willing to, to, to cave on a few things with the NDP playing hardball. So let's talk about the 44th parliament because it resumes on November 22nd, um, you ran, you you are a self-described progressive, and I would even go as far as saying a bit of a socialist, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. correct? Yep. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see the NDP focus on in this next term? So the the big thing is electoral reform. Really? That, that's your one thing that you hope people, that the NDP push for? Yeah. So, so look, so going forward, like we have to, another elect, it's a minority government, so there could be another election in 18 months. That's that's kind of the average. Um, 
the the only electoral reform i think a lot of people see is the only way to to really give the ndp a bigger voice in parliament and get more progressive policies done um because this even in like the uh, this minority government uh situation with the ndp is king makers um it's just there isn't enough that's gonna get done you know the ndp wants true universal health care they want um stronger action on climate change they want the wealth tax um and all of these policies just aren't going to happen unless the ndp can win more seats uh and electoral reform is the the i think the only way forward that's that's realistically going to happen um i know jack has said that he he wants a wealth tax because he wants to make sure um to avoid uh an austerity government in the future coming in and justifying austerity because of all the pandemic aid. Um, but I think, I think ele electoral reforms is, is the thing. Is the top of your priority. Yeah. Um, we are 30 minutes into the interview and I want to ask the question before we do our wrap up here is a, this was your first election on the ballot. Um, yeah. Looking back on it. Uh, did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, I did. It, it was stressful. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it was a it was a good experience. Uh, maybe I'll run again. I was gonna ask. Uh, I was that gonna ask the follow up? Uh, now that you've been active in the NDP in Alberta, would you be interested in running again federally, provincially, uh, all of the above, municipally in the future? Because usually you take one kick at the can and sometimes if you get defeated you lose your interest in it but uh would you be willing to even put your name forward again because of the experience that you've got in this last election yeah i put my name forward uh provincially and federally again as well uh, i don't know municipal i'm not i'm not sure about that one you got another four years to decide <laughs> the <Yeah>. municipal <laughs> politics um Juan, I want to thank you for this. Uh, I, I always I always like talking politics and I always like trying to dissect what went wrong, what went right. And the NDP have, a, uh, I think they have some soul searching to do to figure out where they're going forward and how they move forward. But thank you for taking half out of your night and just chatting and talking about where, where you stood in this whole grand scheme of NDP politics. So greatly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I'm always down to talk politics. Oh, we will have you back on in the new year for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for everyone listening. Uh, I The links to Juan's, I think if I'm not mistaken, is still active on Twitter. His Twitter yep. is going to be in the show notes. So please go check him out and follow him. Juan, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you for having me.